drums, drummers, and the drumming industry. Hello, my name is Paul Rodney, better known as The Rod. I'm not an authority, nor do I claim to be. I play the drums most of my life. I've worked in artist relations for two drum product manufacturers. I served as a product tester at times and even took a stab at my own drum company. There's a unique bond between drummers unlike any other instrument which surpasses race, sex, age, and religion. It makes us a unique group of people. Drums are my passion. They are my life. Welcome to Rog Stock and Drums. As I'm walking in front of the world-famous First Avenue Club located in Minneapolis, Minnesota, seeing many of the legends who have performed here and recounting many of the shows I have attended throughout the years, none stand out to me more than a Motorhead concert. I've seen Motorhead here a number of times, but have lost count on how many times I've seen them throughout the years. I first met Mickey back in 1994 on tour for Motorhead's record, Bastards, a support act for Black Sabbath on the Cross Purposes tour. I was introduced to Mickey through my friend Bobby Rondinelli, who was drumming for Black Sabbath at the time. This was one of my favorite memories of all time. I was invited to dinner with Black Sabbath and Motorhead prior to the show. I was sitting amongst legends, and all I can remember is talking with Mickey, Bobby, and Pete Sandoval of the band Morbid Angel, who was the opener for that evening. We talked gear, music, drums, technique. I was in heaven. Later that evening, when Motorhead hit the stage, I was watching them from stage right. Mickey caught a glimpse of me and motioned for me to come up on stage and sit directly behind him for their set. It was an amazing evening. Before that evening, I had heard of Motorhead and much of their music, but it wasn't until that evening that I actually got it. Back on February 15th of this year, 2011, it was a sold out show and people were lined up around the club on both sides of the building. You can't entirely capture the energy of Motorhead on any recording. They have to be experienced. Prior to Mickey, Motorhead had a respected history. Every drummer to that point was great, but when Mickey joined the band, it was a significant change in their sound. I talked with Mickey in support of their most recent CD, The World Is Yours, and it's a stunning addition to their collection. Sit back for a great interview with amazing access. They had a very busy schedule that day and fit me in. So I'd like to thank not only Mickey, but also their road manager, Eddie Rocha, who went way out of his way to make this happen. You guys got a good level? Without further ado, here's Mickey D. Hey Mickey, how you doing? This is Paul Rocky. Great to have you on the show, man. Good to see you. Talking in support today of your uh, latest record, The World Is Yours. How's it going so far with the tour? Uh, amazing. I mean, the album just been out for a little over a week here, I think. And uh, I just saw today, this morning actually, that we were number one selling in Canada, which is great. Mm -hmm. Nothing that really happens to us uh, too often. But no, I mean, I really enjoy that people have a chance to, to check it out. And if they like it or hate it, that's, that's a different story. But at least they're checking it out. So. <laughs> no, it's an amazing record. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's a great album. There's no problem there. Uh, we always do our best. We, Exactly what we needed, I suppose. Yes, our filthy crew. Yeah, you know. nah, they're good guys. No, and the tour's been um, been really good, you know, so far, so good. For your drum solo, are you gonna do an intro with the song uh, "Outlaw"? Because that song to me is like the perfect song to lead into a drum solo. Outlaw. Outlaw. No, no, we we don't play that one, but we have. Uh, I, I still do the solo in tragedy, which okay. I think it's. Uh, I want to do it in the song, you know. 
We had sacrifice for years, and you know, well, it's time to change. Getting boring now, you know. <laughs> I, I tell you what, though, you know, it's it's funny because I'm starting to get 10% in the bar, you know, from because when I do the solo, people just run to the bar and they sell a lot of beer, so I, I'm collecting 10% there. Freaking guitar players, so isn't the it? The crappier solo I do, the more cash to make. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about your solos, your incredible drum set. What I love about your, your setup. It was okay. best uh, covered by Bobby Ryan and Nelly one time. He told me when he played your kit. He goes, I had to take an elevator to the second floor just to hit the freaking toms. I love how you got your toms so high and your cymbals so low. What? How did this well, setup evolve? I don't think it is that high, though. I always... Well, as you can see, I'm sitting pretty low. This is actually because I'm doing a lot of shows mm -hmm. that I try to keep the angles straight, as you can see. But I do hit a lot of rim shots. Mm -hmm. So the snare is fairly flat, just to have nice angles in your in your wrists. When you do so many shows, mm -hmm. if you have these toms as high as they are, or you think it's high, but it keeps my shoulders up, and I have to sit, I have to really, you know, yeah. s stretch out to, to hit them. I worked a lot over the years with with trying to get my drums and cymbals in 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 a setting where it's it's very natural straight line so you're not going to screw up if you do 200 shows a year or 150 shows a year every year mm -hmm. for uh, so many years it's it's important that i mean i can feel if a symbol is just a little too low or high immediately i can start that i'm you know something's wrong with the shoulder or or your back or you know and this seems to work for me you know i have sit very low pretty much 90 degrees on my on my legs here, give you good, good power on, on, on the kicks, you know, and yeah, it's, it, it forces me to to really stretch up and not sink in and, you know, yeah. that, that's when I believe you're going to get get uh, problems if you do a lot of shows and, and if you want to play as hard as I do, you know, then you better have your stuff in, in good uh, angles and good settings, so it works for me. Let's talk about some of your incredible products. You've been with Peisty Symbols since 1987. Uh, yes, since I started, really. Yeah, these Peisty's are, are, are my babies, you know. There's two 19s on, on here, two 18s, a 19 and a 20. Uh, 22, Power Ride, a Splash, a 14, China, a 20. My favorite here is actually a full crash. This is a power. I, I think we're out of fulls. And then a 19 and a 16 China as well. And then you have the Mickey D Hell's Bell here, as you can see. It says Mickey D on there. Um, Hell's Bell. Well, where did you get that? Now, a friend of mine made it. And I only play it when it's time for tea. <laughs> or the ferry is about to leave, you know. So, well, it's just for fun. And the Sound Edge, Hyatt. And they're all the signature alloy series. Yes. These, these are. Um, the cymbals I've played forever, really, the same setup. And uh, there's not a Hyatt in the world that's gonna beat this baby here. 14 sound edge. Now, during the mid 90s, you developed a cymbal uh, with Peisty. Uh, it was a bigger bell uh, cymbal, yes. like a 20 inch. Can you tell me a little bit about that? How, what's the development process like when you're working with a company like uh, Peisty? It's great, I mean, you know, we like family. Gee, you know, it's like asking about your parents, really. <laughs> because, um, They've been great behind me, and, and we, we have a great great relationship. You know, if I can help out, um, the problem I can tell you that I have is, is, is on the right side. Because with Motorhead, I try, I want a cymbal to sound, have a nice cymbal sound in it, but I do play a lot of hard quarter notes, and, and he, the problem is that, of course, the cymbals start to bleed too much until it goes into a frenzy. And uh, this is really good. This is a good symbol. But I like to, to develop that and, and continue working on that. I, I did try a prototype that we made, but it was too hard. I was breaking too many sticks. <laughs> the bell was uh, too hard. But we're all always trying to move forward and, and try to come up with something new. Because hitting really hard on the bell, uh, you know, either the symbol is totally dead, mm -hmm. which I hate, and the bell sounds good, or the symbol bleeds too much, and, and I like a, a good bell and a good symbol, because I do a lot of little 
tingling shit on on there as well. So uh, that's that's the problem to find a good media right there. It's uh, I want it to just sound like a symbol, like a ride symbol. I don't want it to sound like a cowbell or a bell bell. I have one here. When we when we're gonna drink tea, so you know what I mean. That's that's the one. Uh, no, I want it to really sound like a, a good ride bell, and then uh, at the same time. You don't want to lose the, the actual nice ride cymbal sound of it, you know. So it's a very hard thing to do. I think it's the hardest cymbal, really, to... Uh, Hi-hats here, this is just perfect. They sound heavy, they are very sharp. Uh, you can really hear what you... If you like to do some little fun stuff. I, I play a lot of, a lot of dynamic stuff up here for myself. You might not even hear it out there, but I do it for myself. You know, little bits and pieces that doesn't maybe translate out to the crowd, but it's for me, you know.
about your sonar kit? You've been a sonar for uh, at least from your King Diamond days. Was yeah. it before that? Uh, yeah, uh, that was sonar as well. I played uh, my first drum kit when I was five was a sonar. Oh really? Okay. But that's more of a coincidence. Isn't okay. it? <laughs> Something that really lasts and and sound as good as these. I have a hard time even comparing any other drums to to this. Um, it's they've just been right for me. A lot of people don't like them because they might be too heavy for them, you okay. know, in a lot of ways. But I mean, all the other drum manufacturers make really good drums today. But yeah. for my personal taste, these are the way. This is the one, you know, that I stuck to. But with the, with the, um, the shells themselves, Sonar talks about that they have a tension-free shell construction style, meaning that if you do a slice down the shell, it won't spring out. Do you notice a big difference between other maple shells yes. with other manufacturers? Yes, you do, because the less you, the less interruption you, of course, have in, in, in wood. You know, it's, it's supposed to be a, uh, a resonant in the, in the drum. Mm -hmm. A lot of drummers come up and, you know, they, they, listen to, to, they listen to how the tuning and stuff is, but, you know, how does the actual wood sound, you know? It's supposed to resonate, and the, the less you cut and screw in there, <laughs> the, the less uh, interruption you get. You know, you get a nice, full, resonant sound. Was this the designer series? This is an old drum kit now. This is the last tour this baby's doing. Yeah, I'll this, take it. <laughs> that is, this, uh, this is uh, not falling apart, but I had it for a long time, this specific uh, kit. But I will... Um, we're working on a new drum kit as we speak, so. Okay. Well, because what was interesting to me years ago when you showed me um, your white kit, yeah. I think it was during an overnight sensation tour, um, it, they had a knob on the front end that you could adjust the tension of the shell to adjust the resonation. Do you use that a lot on this? Not live. You don't really do it. But in the studio, I, I, I got to tell you, every single album I've done, when you play three toms and then two floors, there's going to be one of these babies that ain't sounding the same, uh, like in, in the same family here. One's going to sound a little too choked or one's going to be too lively. Of course, because you have different sizes to make sense, but you, you still want them in the same category. Yeah. And, and uh, at that point, you could, you know, change it a little bit to tighten it up. If it was, you could tell me, oh, the 13 inch sounds uh, perfect. And out here, it sounds a little too choked to me maybe yeah. and then maybe i choke up the 14 and the 10 a little bit you know and and they all sounded the same you know so amazing kid well, also the, the um the designer based drum mount that is just totally solid are, are the designer kits still available i have not been able no, to find any literature no, no they're not making them anymore um you can still get this though oh you can okay uh for me it's really good because the way i have my 10 inch tom here you know, you can you can really sit upside down and get it to work. Because <laughs> okay. um, you have all the the movement back and forth, you tilting up and down on this on this stand, and then still you have the oh, you can move them any way you want. You know, amazing. Let's talk about some of the Very other good idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Just I love the the whole design of those things. Now let's talk about your drumsticks. Now this is a new company that I've I've recently heard of. Um, and you're wearing a t-shirt, so obviously oh, very proud of the that's company. A coincidence. Yeah, oh, I'm sure it's a coincidence. I'm a part owner of the company. I was going to ask yeah. you that. That's what I heard. Yeah. So when did you start owning parts of it? Well, talk about them. Talk about them. No, I've been, I was with Vic Firth for oh, 20 years. Great, great guys, great drumsticks. Um, I was never going to leave those guys, you know. They, uh, and and I like, really like to point that out, but I didn't leave the... Uh, I stopped playing... Vic Firth because it was a bad stick because I had an opportunity here to in, invest and and uh, and it's a Swedish company. A friend of mine is is a part owner and they really wanted me to to get on this. I played them and it, it really is the most superior stick I ever played. That's why I changed really. It's a small company, so I was very very uh, concerned over quality that we it had to be quality sticks. And uh, we managed to do that. We have a weight control on this. So when I actually get 500 pairs, uh, they're all actually weighing the same. Oh, wow. And I have, I have two kind of weights here, as you can see. One with a red motorhead butt, and one with a black. 
And uh, this black one is a little bit heavier. The weight's a little bit further up in the stick. So it feels heavy. The actual stick weighs the same. But in, in you know, the wood is different, you know, how, how the woods are. So these are a little bit heavier in, in, uh, in the feel of it. Is that because you're doing a lot more ride work? No, I, I changed every song. I have different sticks in different hands, really, you know. For instance, it got the power. I really like to have a heavy snare stick. Sometimes in, in tragedy, where I do a lot of bell work and tingling stuff, I, I choose a, a black one. They last a little better than, than if they're a little lighter here. You know? So I'm, I'm very happy with the, with the quality and the results of uh, the sticks that we make. Um, so I said, all right, let's give it a shot, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've been with uh, with our company now for uh, two years, I think. Two years. Okay. And uh, it's going it's going really well because you know I send these sticks to friends I have around the world, and and they actually go crazy about them because of you know, the quality. And they don't split. I mean, you do crack a stick, but they don't split here. Oh, okay. You know, like uh, a lot of other sticks do. I mean, I used to come back from tour almost bald on my left side here because of the, the rim shots. I had big toupees hanging in the damn stick after some of these shows. Uh, and that is no more. So uh, I look the same on both sides. That's beautiful. Yeah, well, thank is, you. It, is that because of uh, they do a lot of humidity balancing on the stick? I heard they have they really concentrate on the humidity of the stick. Yes, and we sand them down with one big stone. Okay. And then they're waxed and hung upside down, every stick is hung so the wax is getting in everywhere. Oh wow. It's not just being thrown and dried. These are waxed and they don't feel waxed at all. So um, the old guy uh, that really picks out the wood here, he knows what he's doing. He's been working with wood all his life. It's just still in the end just a bloody stick. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, it's nice to 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 trust your uh, your equipment. Mm -hmm. That's why I stuck with Peisty, Sonar, DW pedals. I love these guys. I've been with those guys for, for a long time too. And and uh, Vixent sticks. It's because it's quality and the way we tour, uh, we do so many shows and so much travel and so much uh, uh, abuse to our, our gear uh, that this stuff's been working for me for many years. You know? And uh, I never left the company or any for you know money or yeah. you know or, or exposure I mean, this is what i love and, and like so that's the important thing you are not an endorsee hopper which is really cool to see because to you what's the important role of an endorsee and also an endorser company what, what should an endorsee do when they endorse a product well i want the service that i've got from from these guys uh, that's important to me that they can deliver the goods here, you know, when I need symbols, I get symbols. When I need to get the drums, I, I need to get my stuff. But again, I can't say anything bad about other companies. Because uh, if you talk to some other, other drummer, maybe another symbol would, would work better for him or her, you know. But for me, for me, it's me. <laughs> That's important to me, it's me. I don't care what other drummers think, you know, this works for me. Well, one thing and quickly. I think it works for you. <laughs> Now, can you tell me a little bit about how you got in the band Motorhead? Now, I understand in 86, you actually did one tour with them before becoming a member in 92. How did that process come about? Well, long story short, we uh, became really good friends. And uh, Lemmy and Phil and Versal actually asked me two or three times over a couple of years there to join the band. And uh, first time I, I was in King Diamond, same thing there. I never hopped between bands. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was very happy what we did with King and, and uh, a bunch of friends. So we did well. And, and then when I left King, I joined Don Dock. And, and, and I remember Lemmy calling at, at a point where I was actually going on tour for 11 months. So I couldn't just leave the band. And, but I felt that I belong in the heavier section of, of music maybe. But Don was a great, great part after King Diamond. That's what I really wanted to play. And, you know, when we finally got going, we did, you know. I'm glad I waited. I could, I had to earn some more stripes. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I had to get some more routine. I couldn't have contributed at all to, uh, as I do today, you know. 
I would have been chewed up and thrown out quick. <laughs> yeah, right. But what do you think you contribute differently than, than other drummers of Motorhead that have, that have done? Because I know you play guitar as well. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I write, me and Phil writes all this stuff, really, in the music. We've done that since early days. And then, of course, all three of us piece it together and write. But we try to take songs as far as we can. And I don't know what I do different. It's just, um, we just work really hard, all three of us. In the end, we, we click pretty good, you know, by working together the way we do and we found found each each, each one of us know how how the other one's working and and it it makes it quite easy actually you know but uh we do as good as we can <laughs> you guys are an amazing band and let's quickly talk about your style of playing you're an incredibly solid drummer and year after year you continually improve get more more uh, steady in your playing what are some of the what's your off tour routine on developing your your chops stay the hell away from drums <laughs> no way, really? Oh, oh yeah. As much as we tour, uh, I don't even want to see a f drumstick <laughs> when I'm off tour. Uh, but it, it really is like that. I cannot leave this tour and then jump on the drum kit. My son's got a drum kit uh, in his room, so I, I sneak in there and jam a little bit sometimes. But I really need mentally to prepare for next tour, you know? Yeah. And Usually, today we didn't have much time, but I'll sit up here. This is my practice. I'm, I'm here an hour before the other guys, and this is where I put the cups on. Very used and up cups, but these are going on. And I sit here and work out little techniques and, and uh, different beats and, you know, and, and work on stuff that I feel that I like to improve. Do you use a click often during no, your live no, performance? No, nothing in these babies. It's it's only my left ear is shut and the, the right one I adjust because it, it, it shuts out all the the wish wash. I can hear what I'm doing, you know. It gets, you get a little bit more low end and a bit more push and, and so you can hear what you're doing because some of the shit is so fast, you know, to try to keep the pockets there. It's are you, That's why I use them. There's nothing in them. Okay. Never have been. Are you using triggers at all? No, no, no. No. Are you doing six to seven months out of the, each year, right? Or is it more? Oh, it's more. Um, it's a non-stop rolling, so we really... If we do this U.S. tour, I come home and off for about two weeks, and then we go to Australia, and then straight to South America. Then I'm coming home, be off for a few weeks, and then we do June, July, August festivals every weekend into September, go back to South America, uh, and then we do the big European tour, October, November, December. So you tell me, where am I gonna, you know, find the energy to... And again, you know, if you're 19 or 15 years old, you love practicing. Mm -hmm. I don't love practicing okay. as much anymore, you know. But I, I love when we when I sound check to sit up here and come up with stuff. But to me now it's more important for me to get some some peace and quiet in between all this because it's very tense, you know. Yeah. It's really a, a very unique band to play in, and uh, as much as we tour, that is the important part for me. Is to, to I need to already now prepare for next tour, you know, mentally. I have to prepare myself and my hands and elbows and shoulders. And, that's why I was talking about my setup is so important for me because mm -hmm. I do I swing a lot when I play. I play pretty hard and I swing a lot and really you know wear out my my upper body on playing drums. So it's very important for me to have the the nice you know to hit a drum from above and not from you know if they too tilt that it's where's mm -hmm. the power coming from, you know, by hitting them from inside here. I'm hitting them from um, um, above, you know. And uh, cymbals, again, they're pretty high up, they far apart. I'm a little guy, you know, but that makes me stretch out, Yeah. you know, and so so you really not injure yourself, you know. Just out of kicks, can I just see how you hold your sticks when you hit your first 10-inch tom over there? What do you mean, with my left? Well, yeah, with your left arm, because I'm just like trying to figure out how you get your angle up there. Like that.
just love it. I've, I've struggled with having my 10 inch over there, and uh, it just doesn't always work. Yeah, so I just. Well, you don't have sonar. That's, ah, yeah, that's, that's trick. the trick right. right there. You know, it, look at this. This baby is way up front here, as you can see. Oh, yeah. Normally, they sit on the middle here. It wouldn't work. You can't get this to work. Because I need to have the high end, you know. Where's that? So what series are you looking at now for Sonar for next next tour? It's the uh, SQ, oh, yeah. SQ2 series, which is the top of the line these days, you know. And uh, it's a little different type of drum. It'll take me a little while to, to get into those. But uh, again, Sonar drums, you really need a hit hard for them to work. It's a very hard kit to sit acoustically and just tap away and jam. Mm -hmm. You need other drums than this, though. But if you hit these, they come out like cannons. They really are shooting out like no other drummer, uh, drum, yeah. drums that drummer, I heard. Drummer, drummer. Well, you need a lot of muscle. <laughs> Have you tried their Birch series at all? And another very important thing is, yes. I get very, very tired. And that pissed me off so much, so I play even better. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's like a rolling snowball, you know. It does piss me off when I get tired, and then I hit even harder, and I work even harder then, you know. So, it's kind of kicking my ass up here. <laughs> this is a torture chamber, actually. I'm sitting next to in, inside. Of the drums! The best drummer in the world, KVT! about your uh, drum heads. You've been with uh, Remo for many years. How long have you been with Remo? Oh, I've been with him for as long as I can remember. Remo is the absolute number one drum head, and every drummer knows that, actually. How often do you switch out heads? Uh, snare head every day, of course, you know. Um, tom heads, maybe three or four shows. Mickey, I can't thank you so much for all the time you've given me. It was a pleasure seeing you again. You're an incredible drummer. Thank you very much. This concludes another episode of Rog's Talking Drums, but not without another drumstick giveaway. Both Jeremy and Mickey were generous enough to give me a number of signed drumsticks. If you'd like one, please email me at therog at rogstalkingdrums.com and in the subject line put the drummer's name and stick giveaway. If you'd like to try your luck for both, please send two emails. We have the winners of the Frederick Anderson Drumstick Giveaway from Episode 1 listed on the Rog's Talking Drums website. Be sure to go to rogstalkingdrums.com to look at it, baby. We have some amazing stories and amazing drummers coming up on future episodes. Please visit rogstalkingdrums.com often to keep up with all the drumming news and all that we're up to. Thank you for watching. Take care. My favorite drums are sonar drums, of course. I've been with them forever. They're almost uh, as old as I am. Uh, check them out yourself. You're going to find so many different series you could choose between, and uh, they all sound absolutely incredible. I'm also pounding on Remo drum heads, so you should check it out, because it's the best. The cymbals I play are Paiste cymbals. I've been with them forever. Uh, it's the best in the business, super good stuff. The drumsticks I play is actually, I'm a part of the company, it's called Vincent. It's a Swedish company. The highest quality drumstick you can absolutely try to get, so. Uh, it's uh, an amazing stick. Check it out, see what you think, and then you can uh, toss it out if you want, but it's absolutely the best quality you can find. Vincent drumsticks. <laughs>